Treasure Seekers Virtual Adventure episode. I'm your host, Sarah with an H, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Murex shells of Southwest Florida. I'm really excited to do this episode because they're one of the most beautiful, intricate shells you can find here on our shores. Don't forget to subscribe online and follow us on all our social media platforms to see all of our daily finds. Let's get started. Here in Southwest Florida, we find predominantly the lace murex and the apple murex shells. However, we're also gonna talk about some shells that we can find on the Atlantic coast as well. Now, this is the big boy, so I'll start with this one. This is the giant Eastern Atlantic murex. It's very spiny, it's very heavy, very dense. Now, these shells are pretty unusual to find washed up in one piece because they're deep sea snails. So these guys live around 200 feet down in the ocean. They're very hard to find from what I understand, especially in a hole condition with all the spines. So we wanna show this one, but keep in mind in Southwest Florida, we really won't find a whole lot of these. I've never seen one out here. It's always possible, of course, but most of the time these are gonna be on the Atlantic side over up into the Carolinas as well, all along that coast. So keep your eye out for these if you're shelling in that area. Now, another rare one that we occasionally find in Southwest Florida, but you may also find on the Atlantic side, is the Cabaret Murex. Now, this, this particular shell is extremely spiny. When they're dredged up from the deep, they're really sharp spines, and when they wash up on the shore, you might find it with more nubs, kind of worn down. We'll show you some pictures here of some of ours that have been found on the tours, and you can tell they've been a little battle-worn. So keep in mind, this is also a deep sea snail, kind of hard to find. So even if it's in rough shape, I would still keep it because these Cabaret Murexes are very hard to find naturally washed up on the shore. So a nice addition to your collection. Now let's talk about the shells that we do find here in Southwest Florida. I'm gonna start with these beautiful pink ones because these are a little less common and they're highly treasured by shellers, especially on shell tours when we have big shell piles like this one, you might be able to find one of these. This little pink shell is called a rose murex. Now they could be peach, they could be slightly spotted with brown, but for the most part, they're bright pink. Now, what makes these so unusual is that not only are they uncommon, but they are really small. The, the maximum size for one of these shells is about two inches in length, and that's including the tail. And if you look at the shape, they're pretty bulbous at the top, not a lot of spines, but they do have that long skinny tail, especially when you look at the aperture side, it's got that really long skinny, almost looks like a lollipop. So because of its, its size, it's extremely hard to see these. And of course, when we find them on shell tours, we get very excited for guests because they're a special treasure. But anyway, if you are out and you find a shell pile and you think, oh, well, I'm not really into the minis, I would dig through that pile anyway because these shells are really uncommon, they're hard to find, and they make a beautiful color addition to your shell collection. So there's the Rose Murex for you. Now we also have an egg casing, which we'll show you now. Now the egg casing of a Rose Murex, to me, looks like a combination of little styrofoam balls. They're usually gonna be a beige or brown, like many other egg casings out here but the quantity of capsules where the eggs may be is very small. They could fit in the size of an arc shell, so definitely something that could fit in the palm of your hand. Now keep in mind, as we always say, if you find an egg casing that's still hydrated, still full of life, maybe there's some potential babies in there, leave them on the beach. We never advocate for taking anything that's alive. If you find it up in the rack line and it's all dried out and crinkled and obviously dead already, then you can keep them if you would like to. But of course, we always wanna return live things back to the water. So let's move on to the next one. Now we're gonna talk about another mini Murex that isn't quite as popular. This is called a pitted Murex. 
It's not quite as recognizable as the other Murexes because it doesn't have that really defined sculpture. It does have some deep pits in its, uh, in its sculpture, but it's, it's pretty tiny and it's usually white, so it's not really as eye-catching as the others. Now, the pitted Murex looks very similar to other small drill shells, and many of the drill shells are in the Murex family. However, we're gonna talk about the mini shells, especially drills, on another episode later on. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the Apple Murex. The Apple Murex is one of the most colorful Murexes that we find, and they're pretty common to find down here in the 10,000 Islands. The Apple Murex is a fat, kind of stubby, bulbous version of a Murex. Again, a short tail that slightly upturns. Now the thing to note about the Apple Murex is that they will always have a dark spot in the corner of the aperture where it meets the body of the shell. So if you look in the upper corner, there should always be a dark spot there. Now I point this out because whenever we find baby shells, and I'm not talking minis, I'm talking juveniles, very small, that maybe died when they were young, these shells are a little harder to tell apart when they're all that size. So if you find an apple murex, you can always tell which one it is by that dark spot in the corner there. Now, these guys don't have a lot of spines, but they do have a lot of texture to them, lots of lumps and bumps, and they are a favorite to collect. And here we have a little egg casing that we found all dried up. I'll show you a close up here. Now these egg casings are pretty unique because this species will lay eggs in a big communal mass. So one snail did not produce all of these little capsules. Usually the females will lay eggs in big masses all stuck together. Now again, I mentioned if you find one that's still hydrated and still has babies in it, you want to make sure to leave that on the beach. It's fine to photograph things if you'd like to, just make sure you return it to the water when you're done. Now the shape of these egg capsules when they're hydrated is kind of like a small ballooned tongue. It has a slight curve to it, almost like someone sticking their tongue up, and there's lots and lots of these stuck together, again, somewhat resembling styrofoam. So that's a pretty good way to tell apart. And of course the rose murex eggs are gonna be far less in quantity. It's gonna be a much smaller little bundle. These egg, these egg casings for the apple murex are gonna be a large, large mass all stuck together. So a good way to identify it. Now let's talk about the wedding dress shell. This is a lace murex. The lace murex is named so because it has these beautiful intricate loops and spines covering the body. It looks so much like a wedding dress with lace or maybe even a, a cake with frosting on it. These shells are extremely sharp, extremely dense, and of course, unpleasant to step on. So keep an eye out for these. These are one of the most beautiful shells out here, in my opinion. The sculpture is so detailed, even if you looked at it with a microscope, you could see every tiny rib and spine on this shell. And, and they're, just, they're just gorgeous. So these shells are predominantly white. Now they might have a little bit of the periostracum on it. So remember again that that's a layer of a skin, a membrane on the shell that if it's still on there, it's pretty fresh. Uh, when the animal is alive, that's one of the things it uses to build its shell. So it may look kind of dirty or beige when you find it, but when they clean up, they're white. Now something else to note is that when they're juveniles, they have a pink tip. So the protoconch, which is the piece of the shell that is originally hatched out with the mollusk at the start of its life, okay, the really tiny speck sized one, the protoconch for a lace murex is pink. Now this is commonly confused with rose murexes. When you find a baby lace murex with a pink tip, it's often confused with a baby rose murex. But keep in mind the shapes are different and the rose murex is going to have that long skinny tail on the aperture whereas the lace murex does not have that. It has a pretty, pretty proportionate opening here on the aperture and then a shorter tail. And of course, there's gonna be more spines on this lace murex. So keep that in mind when you find juveniles. If you have any questions, you can always contact your local shell guides. But the lace murex is one of the most collectible ones out here. And of course, we love them. Keep your eye out for those in the shell piles.
today's episode on the Mirex shells of Southwest Florida. Thanks so much for joining me on another episode of Treasure Seekers Virtual Adventures. Don't forget to subscribe to us online on YouTube and all the social media platforms so you can see all of our daily finds from the tours. Happy shelling, everybody.